Welcome to the first Random Book Talk for 2012. My name is Veronica Milson, and we've got some fantastic authors for you throughout the year, which you can check out each month at randomhouse.com.au. Our first author is Deborah Robertson, whose first novel, Careless, was shortlisted for the Miles Franklin Award in 2007. Sweet Old World is her second novel, and it's Random House Australia's Book of the Month for March. Welcome, Deborah. Hi. Can you give us a bit of an insight into the story behind Sweet Old World? Well, it's the story of a love affair and it takes place on an island where all the best love affairs take place. It's an island just off the west coast of Ireland um, called Inishmore. Very, very austere landscape, buffeted by winds, low clouds, very, very dramatic. Um, it's the story of a, um, an Australian journalist who has just really become stranded on the island through circumstance. His sister's there, he's gone to help his sister. And uh, through a chain of events, he meets a woman. And I'm not going to say any more about it at, the, at this point. Oh, a teaser, just leaving it for us. Just leave it at Gotta get that the book. for the moment. Yeah, yeah, right. In the past, you've described your writing process as having ideas that are like little cities, which you then need to create interconnecting roads uh, between them, uh, which in order, you know, allows you to tell a story. Can you describe to us the little cities or ideas um, that you explored through Sweet Old World? Well. Um, the sad or happy fact is that every book, for me at least, has a completely different process. So those little cities that may have existed in the past suffered terrible earthquakes yeah. this time. It was just <laughs> all fell into the sea because that wasn't at all my process this time. I was walking in a heavy black fog. I didn't have a clue where I was going and um, I could see only about six inches in front of my face the whole time. So I would just write along and then I'd see something else and I'd write a little bit further and write a little bit further. And then um, that process continued. Uh, I wrote the whole book and then I read what I'd written and understood what I needed, what the book was about. And I turned around and wrote the whole thing over again. Sounds torturous. Oh, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one of our Random House Facebook fans has got a question for you. Her name's Natalie Raston, which you might recognise. She says, I was lucky enough to have you, Deborah, as a teacher when I was at uni. Um, she said that you gave her her first confirmation that she could actually write. So her question is, who gave you your first encouragement and feedback about your own writing? Mm, that's a very lovely response to receive. Um, and it's a great question um, to be asked. The, f the person who encouraged me in that way was my creative writing teacher, which was why when I was teaching, I was, um, I was really committed to it. And um, because I'd been given that, that oh, glimpse into a world that I hadn't known it existed when I was 17, 18, um, I, just stumbled by chance into a creative writing class. I had no idea um, what was waiting for me. And um, I had an electrifying teacher. Um, and I doubt whether I'd be writing if I hadn't had just that, that incredible luck. In Sweet Old World, we learn very on that David Quinn, uh, the main character, has a desperate yearning to be mm. a father, which was really interesting to read from a male's perspective, uh, mm. almost like a biological clock ticking. Yeah. It's usually uh, you know, a, a trait reserved for a stereotypical woman. Yeah, it is. What was it that um, led you into telling the idea from a male's perspective? Because I hadn't been told. Uh, when I started this book, it was a story about three sisters who made a baby. So ah. one of them couldn't have a baby, one provided the egg, one provided the womb. And I worked on that for oh, 18 months, something like that. Really? And I was bored out of my mind. I knew, I knew it all. I knew the women. It was all, it was all, it was like an ep episode of 60 Minutes, you know, it was all sort of just on one level. Mm. 
And I became really interested in the men behind those three women and so I sort of started moving into them. So I started to talk to some the men around me and found out these extraordinary things that, um, you know, walking, talking, happy, happy, smiling men were actually who were of uh, about that age, who hadn't become fathers, were, um, were holding these sort of, these almost a sort of crisis about fatherhood to themselves. Some of the, some of the things they said to me were really strong. Um, they were, they were trying to work out how they made meaning of their lives if they weren't to become fathers. Yeah, and that's, that's really interesting. That's not a small question. It's an existential crisis. We, we use the term midlife crisis and we laugh and um, we, we think of, of cliched responses to that. But it's more serious than that. It's, it's people in this one life that they have trying to make meaning and um, and for these men and therefore for the character of David that I developed um, this is a central central part of their masculinity and yet they have no, they have not found a way of expressing that <laughs> Sweet Old World is an incredible love story, but if you're hoping for a happily ever after ending, you're probably not going to get it. Was there any hesitation about how the love story would end, or did you always think that David and Tanya's relationship was inevitably flawed? I think you sort of learn more about qualities of love and um, need for love um, in stories that don't necessarily end up happy happy. It's the sort of loss of love that throws love into relief. Um, so I was really interested in the sort of tragic traditions of, of love stories um, and in a sense how more sort of everlasting the quality of their love is because of the impossibility. And I was also exploring the whole way through the novel um, the idea that character is destiny and f so I didn't have a very firm idea of what would happen in the end because that would sort of be um, uninteresting for me to write. Mm. Um, and we've already heard you were in the black fog. Yeah, you, I was in that fog. You no idea. That's right. Yeah. But, but there were both characters, the lovers, have, um, have elements to their character that they try to fit together over and over and over again. They try to fit these strands of themselves together and um, I won't say exactly how well they knit or, or don't knit. Everything had to come from character. I wasn't um, prepared to impose an ending of any sort. So a sequel isn't on the horizon then? I was hoping there might be a chance for them. Well, you know, if they just keep chatting to me, uh, I don't know. I never say no. Okay. Mm. And Deborah Robertson, what is the book that has most influenced your life and why? Gosh, influence. Um, oh, look, it would have to be two books that were read side by side, fanatically, hysterically, at the age of 12, 13. Um, there are two books called That Was Then, This Is Now and The Outsiders by oh. someone called Essie Hinton. And we found, my girlfriends and I found them in the school library. And they were, they're, they're stories of teenage gang life in a big city of New York. Um, two gangs, the Socials, who are the upper class kids, and the Greasers sort of name explains it from the, the bad side of town. All boys, I don't think there's a girl or a sister or a mother in any of the books. Mm -hmm. But they're these fantastic, hyper-realist novels about the lives of teenage boys sort of trapped in their own um, subcultures. They were fantastic books because um, they 
They were my first experience of literature sort of thickening the reality around me. I went to a very big state high school where there were lots of gangs and things like that. And suddenly everyone had um, an interior life and mystery and motivation and even, even the kids that you really didn't like. I could see that they had humanity. This book had sort of just exploded the world for me. Thank you so much, Deborah. It's a pleasure, thanks. If you'd like to read the first chapter of Sweet Old World, you can do that at randomhouse.com.au. Our next book of the month is Bitter Greens, so we'll be chatting to Kate Forsyth. See you then.